Hi, this is Gail with Bernina F. Naperville, and you know, my hair is a little out of control right now, but that's not the only thing out of control. Do you have a pesky door that just won't stay open no matter how hard you try? Well, we've got the solution this month for our March Fat Quarter of the Month project. That's right. We are doing a cute weighted doorstop suitable and heavy enough for almost any door in your house. Now, there are two sizes that you can choose from. We made the large one. Your door might require a little bit less oomph. So, we're going to be exploring this month doing applique using couching. And that's really fun. I have provided a house template for you in two sizes. And I've also provided um, some instruction for using either the number 22 foot or the number 25 foot. Now the number 22 foot is a three groove couching foot. That one is allowing you to kind of put three heavier threads through this little piece in the foot. And then the five groove one allows you to put like five threads through. And they're both on sale this month because this is March, 2023, and it's 20% off all Bernina feet and whether it's a sewing machine, a serger, or whatever. So stock up on these babies. Um, so we're gonna do that, and then we're just gonna do some basic construction. It's, it's not too challenging. So let's roll up our sleeves and get into it. And don't forget that there is a handout associated with this video that's gonna give you all of the cutting instructions and details, stitch adjustments, you know, that kind of thing. And you can find that on our Bernina of Naperville website as well under our Fat Quarter Club class description. All right, so here, in addition to your fat quarter package, you're gonna need some fusible woven. I do that to line our outer fabrics. You're gonna need your embellishment threads, which are these five here. It's Yen Met, uh, Orifil 12 weight, and then three Razzles. And then I'm using uh, for the couching portion of this, this number 25 couching foot. It's got five grooves. I'll get in there intimately with it later. And, uh, and then I got a half, I'm sorry, it's not a half pound, it's five pounds. I got five pounds of rocks that we are going to stuff in our kettlebell type shaped doorstop. So one of the things I wanna um, be mindful of is I shot some of the pre-footage for this video and I call this half a pound, but it's really five pounds. You're also gonna need a scrap of fabric, probably about a half a yard's worth of just something. It doesn't even have to be the same fabric, but I'm making a lining for the door stop. You don't need to do that. If you wanted to just stuff your door stop, that's fine as well. Um, but but that's, that's all you need. So why don't we go ahead and start sewing this? So this month you can choose to make a small size or a large size. For the video, I'm making the large size. Then for our applique template, there is the small house or there's the large house. So those are your pieces. So it's easy to cut out, let's get to it. So you're going to take your template and lay it out on one of your fat quarters. Now I'm gonna do all four sides of my door stop out of the same fabric and then I'm gonna do my little embellished house out of the prints. So I'm starting with this and one of the things I wanna show you is we can't really get two out with this layout, but we're gonna cut the first one just like this. And I'm using my rotary cutter mat to do this, just like that. And so there's two and we need four. So now we're gonna take this piece and turn it over this way and cut our other two pieces. Now, the rest of it is pretty easy. I'm going to, um, this is gonna be a house, this is gonna be a house, this is gonna be a house, and this is gonna be a house. My top and bottom is gonna be this, and I think I might reserve this little light one right here for my handle. So let's, um, this one's easy when we cut our top and bottom because those are just squares. Now, one of the things I want to, you to keep in mind is if you have any scrap fabric this month, you're gonna wanna make 
a little trapezoid. So you're gonna cut muslin pieces or just scrap fabric in your stash or a recycled fabric, an old shirt that you wanna recycle, whatever. And you're gonna cut four of these out of that fabric. And then you're also gonna cut one eight and a half inch square, one five and a half inch square out of that, just like we've done with our pretty fabric here. So using a small pair of scissors, I cut the house template. You're gonna get this with the handout. And I cut that out so that I can easily trace four of these on to the paper side of my fusible web. And then once you have these traced out, all we're gonna do is cut our houses roughly and then we're gonna iron these on to the wrong side of four different fat quarters from our Fat Quarter Club collection. You're gonna cut the house out exactly on the line. And I'm using these scissors that have multiple holes in them and it just really helps me get a little bit better grip on my scissors as I cut. All right, so once that's trimmed, all you're gonna do is just peel the paper off and attach it to one of your pre-cut gray pieces. So I took a moment on our pieces, all of the outer pieces of our doorstop I backed with a black fusible woven. We carry this by the roll. The link to the supply list is on here and I just cut them the same size as I cut our outer piece. This is just gonna give it a little bit more stability so that when I do the embellishment on this, it will indeed hold together a little bit better. And I'm gonna leave it about a quarter of an inch above the edge there because I have a quarter inch seam allowance on this and now I'm going to press this into position. And now we have the really fun playtime of working with all kinds of our decorative threads to cover the edges around our house and we're going to do this on all four sides of our weight. So my machine is threaded with white isocord on top and bobbin fill in the bottom for this embellishment. And I'm using this um, 2714 color of Orafil 12, 12 weight thread, a um, AN3 iridescent or pearlescent yen met thread. And then these threads are the razzle thread from Orafil and they're just in an ecru black and white. And this is what we're gonna be couching with. And there's a couple different feet like this one. We're gonna be using this 25, number 25 couching foot. And this one is a five groove. See those little five grooves in there? Because we're using five threads. So basically, each thread is gonna have its own little channel and they're all gonna kind of rest in there. Now I do it where I just take all of my threads, squeeze them in and let the foot comb them through. But, um, and I think you might find that the easiest way to do it, but this is gonna go on my machine. And then this is a maximum of a five and a half millimeter foot. So these do not come in a C or a dual feed version. Once, you, once you've fed your threads through and you're combing it and you have this nice little smooth piece, you're gonna always wanna try to keep your threads coming forward like this. And I've used my multiple spool rack and put it towards the front of my machine on my table just to keep all of these threads sorted and smooth so they don't get tangled and knotted and twisted as we do our applique. So some of, the, some of you that have watched some of our other videos might have noticed that I always talk about pivoting with the needle on the right hand side um, so that, you know, as you pivot around some, an applique piece that might be on the left side, it keeps everything nice and smooth. Well, these things go a little out the window when we're talking about something like this. We are just gonna pivot wherever we see fit. So I'm using stitch number four with the stitch length 
adjusted to 0.5 and the stitch width at 5.5. And I really like this little running zigzag stitch because it is a practical stitch. You can use this for mending and other types of knits. But why I like it for this project is it's going to really sew all five of these slippery little weird threads in place easily. And then we're just going to try to keep everything nice and smooth here as we go tightly around this corner. So we're going to stop. I'm going to go in just a few more stitches. And now I have hover mode engaged. So that's going to allow me to have that foot automatically lift up for me so I can spin it around and go the other direction. And now I've got a really tight corner here so every time I stop it's important for me to let that hover mechanism pop up, stop, pop up, stitch, stop, pop up, stitch, stop, pop up, stitch stop and pop up that is like our moat our motive our our motto rather that's our motto for this project And another little tip I'd like to give you is if you have a really dark contrasty thread like I have in here with that black and it's on the inside or in the side, just try to make sure that you keep it there if things do get a little twisted with your project. Okay, now I'm going to zip this down again and you can see that's what I'm trying to do there. Here we go. La la la. Okay. Okay, now we're down to the edge here, so we're going to stitch, stop, hover, stitch, stop, hover. Okay, now here's a tight pivot again as we come down this way. And once again, with this house, we're going to pivot here. And I just like to kind of fill this in, even though most of it's going to be in our seam allowance. gently around this door opening because we have we want to try our best to make symmetric doors As we finish this, I'm going to go on down here and tie off. So for the little handle for the bag, it's going to be 
the fusible woven under here as well and it's cut four by eight and a half and I folded it in half then folded it in half again. Now we're going to use that Bernina edge stitch foot to stitch right down both sides. We've moved the needle three clicks to the left and we're guiding this edge on both sides right up to that little metal guide in the middle of the number 10 edge stitch foot. On your five and a half inch piece you're going to stitch the handle on one side just under a quarter of an inch just so that it's basted into place and you're going to do that on both sides and now we just have our handle on this piece. Okay I really like this tool because we have a seam ripper at one end and we have the awl at another and I'm going to use the awl today. And the first thing I'm going to use this on is marking the corners of my square that's going to be on the bottom of our doorstop weight so that um, this one is going to be the inside casing that we're going to put in there, you know, the fill. And so what I like to do is mark our seam allowances are a quarter of an inch. So I'm just going to mark a quarter of an inch with my awl and I'm making a little hole just like that with my awl and we're going to do this on each side at our quarter of an inch. Now there are also better rulers than this. Let me show you one. So there's this non-slip angle finder and what this is there's like a little 90 degree mark in that. What you do is you line it right up on that corner then you fit your little stiletto or your pen or whatever and then that finds that piece. It's just a really fast way to add a little dot at these little intersections. And it's got 90 degrees, 60 degrees, 130, 120. And so I use this a lot in some of my Y seams and patchworking, but it certainly works for this application as well. And I didn't open it because I'm here at the store and I have one of these opened at home. I should have showed you there. Another advantage of marking your corners like this is that you don't need to have to worry about making a mark. Now on our white, we could have used a ballpoint pen, we could have used our blue water soluble pen, but we are not gonna be necessarily able to do that on our darker fabric. You know, the backside of our fabric, the SF-101 that we used for our outer bit is um, black and hard to make a mark on. All right, so now that we have our marks, we're gonna center this piece right in the middle and we're going to sew from dot to dot. So you're starting right in that first hole, backing up and then continuing and sewing all the way to the end. until we get to that dot. Now we're gonna back up and cut. Okay, so I've sewn the first side on and now we're gonna follow suit with all of the other sides. And so here's our top piece. Once again, we're kind of lining that up in the middle and we're gonna stitch from the hole to the hole here and just repeat the process until we get all the way around. So you're starting right in that first hole, backing up, and then continuing, and sewing all the way to the end until you get to that previous little stitching point, and then you're going to reverse and cut. Now on the last side, you're starting at that stitching right there. So you're just going to stitch right to, there we go, that little stitching point and cut. All right, so here's our piece with all of the bottom sewn. Now we need to sew the tops to our five and a half inch square, which I already pre-marked those holes. So just like we did the other one, we're gonna line it up 
right in the center like this. And yes, it's not lining up on both sides and neither did the bottom, but on our sides, we're gonna have a little bit fatter seam allowance. And that's just honestly, so that when we stuff one side, we've got a little bit more seam allowance to hold on to. So just keep that in mind. And I'll tell you what the seam allowance is when we get to that. But for right now, we're gonna stitch all of these pieces together, just like you saw me do the first piece. So dot to dot, dot to seam, dot to seam, dot to seam, then seam to seam. All right, after you sew the top on to the bottom, you kind of have this like billowy thing here, but on the sides, you're just gonna line them up together and you're gonna sew half an inch, just a half an inch seam allowance on three sides. Oh, so, okay, so one foot, one C, and the first stitch, we're lining our long seam, weird seam up here so that they're even and nice and pretty. And you know, you've got this little piece that's gonna stick out down there like that, but don't worry about it. Okay, and you might ask, why are we sewing this middle piece first rather than our outer piece? Well, because I want you to practice on this middle piece first. And because if we screw up the middle piece, who cares? Nobody's gonna see it except the rocks. So I'm backing up, going forward, using my half an inch seam allowance, which is the one right there, be the one eighth before the five eighth marking. And then we're gonna cut and do two more sides. And on the inside piece, and our outer piece, we're gonna leave that fourth side open so we can insert our rocks and we can insert our lining inside our outer piece. Now you'll remember how I said that we can't really mark our blue water soluble pen. So I used my awl, just like you saw me do with the inside piece. And now we're gonna line that up. I'm changing to my little 57 D foot here. And you might ask, well, Gail, why are you using the 57 D foot today? And honestly, Amy and I were fighting over the 97 D here at the shop and I'm like, meh, I can use 57 D, no problem. All right, so we're gonna stitch a few stitches, go backwards, there we go. Not going past that little dot, every stitch. stop right on that dot back cut and keep adding these other pieces just like we did for our inside sleep who are the people in your neighborhood in your neighborhood well these people clearly love to sew and love to couch all right so once you get the bottom sewn on you're gonna add the top and the top goes on just like we did the top on that inside pillow insert. So we're gonna sew these pieces on dot to dot, all four sides. And then we're gonna sew three sides up just like we did before. Leave the opening so we can insert that weighted pillow. So this thing is almost done and yes, there is going to be just a wee bit of hand sewing, but I feel pretty confident that you guys can handle it. So once you get all the sewing done, you're gonna turn it inside out, just like this, and now it's waiting for its little insert. But we gotta finish that up first. So we're gonna fill our little inside uh, piece here, and this is a uh, rocks from Michael's. This is about five pounds. Um, and you know, there they are, right? Um, I'm kind of tempted to not even open them out of this mesh and just fill this with polyfill and then insert this inside. I think this is going to be the tidiest way to do it, but we certainly don't need the tag. So I'm going to cut that off. We have tons of polyfill here that I've gotten for different projects and stuff. So I'm just gonna lightly fill this with polyfill. You know, another source of polyfill that's, you know, kind of, I think a little bit easier on our pocketbook sometimes is buying old pillow cushions and things like that. There we go. 
perfect. Now, I'm gonna let it sit on that polyfill like this. Okay, before I went overboard on stuffing, what I wanted to do is stick my little lining in there first. I don't know what I was thinking, but thank goodness for this video and me, you know, hacking my way through this that you will not make the same mistake, right? So anyway, so my piece is still in there, the small opening towards the top and the polyfill towards the bottom. And now, ugh, my rocks, I love these rocks, but I'm gonna put them in here now. Get everything nice and, it, this might not be pretty on film, ladies and gentlemen, get that in there. Okay, there we go. Whew, back in business, crisis averted. All right, so here we go. So now we're just gonna fill the polyfill around here. I'm squeezing it down in the corners and you know, all of the places, all those little hiding places here. And we just wanna make sure how it's gonna look on the sides here. Remember we have that half an inch seam allowance that we want. So we don't wanna stuff it so much that we won't be able to sew it. But I think we can get just a little bit more stuffing in here. Okay, squeeze it around. Kinda make sure it's flat in there. Okay. I think this is gonna be cute. So now I'm gonna tilt this on its side and I'm gonna peel back the outer piece here and I'm gonna grab our lining, fold it over about a half an inch, find the other piece and fold that over about a half an inch and we're gonna pin and we're gonna hand stitch. All right, so it's hand sewing time and I can't thread a needle to save myself, but Thanks to these Kafe Facet needle threaders with the light, I might just be able to do so. I'm gonna do a whip stitch. This is not, this is for the inside. It's not gonna be anything pretty. I don't wanna hear all you haters out there picking on my hand stitching, okay? Okay, so now that I finished the inside, I've gone ahead and pinned the outside just like I did with the inside, but this time I'm gonna take a little bit more care in my hand stitching. So I'm just gonna bury my knot. And I'm just taking little tiny stitches about an eighth of an inch apart, kind of like I would sew on a binding, maybe a little bit closer together than if I were sewing on a binding. Three, four, but, oh, <laughs> you caught me. So if you don't need this door stop necessarily for a door, it makes for a very low impact soft kettlebell. <laughs> well, I hope that you enjoyed this month's exercise and tutorial and you check out some of our other Fat Quarter of the Month projects. Now, if you want to sign up, it's pretty easy. You just go to BerninaFNaperville.com and you search for Fat Quarter Club. And if you sign up, you purchase your first Fat Quarter project, which may be March of 2023, you're going to be enrolled in an auto invoice program. So it's going to send you an invoice every month. And if you pay it, you're gonna get that month's Fat Quarter Club package. If you choose to not pay it, then you're not gonna get it, but you're not obligated. You're not getting billed once a month. So maybe you'll check it out. We also have a ton of other tutorials on our YouTube channel, so please check that out. And it's easy. It's youtube.com slash Bernina of Naperville. And there you can like, comment, and subscribe. All right, I've only got 50 more of these repetitions to do. All right, 10. 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, oh! And that is why we made it soft.